What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the new 2020 Mazda 6 courtesy of Jack Gion Bombo Mazda in York, PA. And so I'm pretty excited to be in this one. Every time I get in the Mazda 6, it always surprises me and I don't know why the interior quality is so on point. Not only that, there are some changes actually for 2020 as well for this one. And we'll of course be going over them for you guys, but also Consumer Reports gives it well above average reliability rating which is the very highest reliability rating possible so what do you say let's go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as i say with all of my reviews there are a few different trim levels available for the 2020 mazda 6 first one being the sport starting at twenty four thousand dollars even touring starts at twenty six thousand six hundred dollars grand touring for twenty nine thousand seven hundred grand touring reserve which actually is the one we are in today that one is going to start at thirty two thousand two hundred dollars and lastly the signature starting at thirty five thousand three hundred dollars and so with all of those trim levels there are actually two different engine setups available first one belonging to the sport and touring trim levels being a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 187 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 186 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a six-speed automatic with the red line coming in at 6,500 rpm and MPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 35 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel, AKA 87 octane. But then you had the 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. And this one belonging to, of course, all the other trim levels besides the sport and the touring. This one puts out 227 horsepower and 87 octane, 250 horsepower at 5,000 RPM and 93 octane. To go along with that 310 pound feet of torque available at 2,000 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a six-speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will of course be testing out in a little bit here red line for this particular engine setup comes in at 6300 rpm with mpg numbers coming in at 23 in the city 31 on the highway but yet again taking regular unleaded fuel or 87 octane so that's always good to save you a little bit of money there but so then before we do any kind of accelerations in the mazda 6 i did want to mention there is a sport driving mode located just to the left of the shifter and i'm going to press that here and it did immediately downshift for me so it is going to hold the rpms at a much higher level and it will also adjust the throttle sensitivity as well so all in all it should give you quite a nice acceleration with that particular setup but before we do that acceleration test first thing i wanted to do let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters here i want to see how quickly they're going to react for us here to put it in manual shift mode what i'm going to do is slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that gives me full control over the shifting it will display your gear in the bottom portion of the tachometer on the left side there so let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration here nothing too crazy this time but let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here here we go not too bad there is a little bit of a delay they're not bad though but ever so slight delay certainly not the fastest paddle shifters i've ever experienced but i'm glad they're there if anything they're good for engine braking it does snow quite often here in pennsylvania so rather than hitting the brakes and sliding all over the place perhaps going down a hill you can use the paddle shifters for engine braking and that should give you if anything a little more peace of mind there but to take it out of that paddle shifter mode all you need to do is simply slide the shifter all the way to the right and that gives full control back to the mazda 6 and since we did that I think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's do a quick little acceleration here and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Mazda 6 here up to speed. Let's go. Whoa. Wow, not bad. We're going uphill too. Yeah, that's plenty of power. Certainly not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. There is a ever so slight slippage but really not all that much there but it's one of those things i always question like with that much power being said at the front wheels you kind of always wonder is it going to retain traction or is there going to be a little bit of torque steer or whatever the case but really it did quite good actually so a little bit of slipping but really it wasn't all that bad so acceleration was plenty good for the mazda 6 but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so when it comes to the braking on the mazda 6 i will say it will differ dependent upon the engine setup that you go with for instance if you go with that first engine setup belonging to the sport and touring trim levels up front you're going to get 11.7 inch ventilated front discs in the back 10.9 inch solid rear discs but if you go with the turbocharged engine setup that you have today that gets bumped up at least in the front to 12.6 inch ventilated front discs and once again in the back 10.9 
29 inch solid rear disc but as far as the braking feel goes it's been perfectly fine for me today there's no brake pedal delay or anything like that to worry about then touching on suspension handling a little bit up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar in the back independent multi-link rear suspension once again with the stabilizer bar as far as ride quality goes i just hit a little pothole back there certainly soaked it up plenty fine for me so really so far my test drive today really no issues with ride quality it seems perfectly fine there as far as steering feel goes that's always one thing mazda always gets 100 correct of course it's not as heavy as my mustang gt but still a very nice weighted steering wheel at least for the mid-size sedan class so definitely gives you a better feeling of being in control of the car and makes you want to throw it around the turns a little more in the back road so i love the steering feel in basically any mazda even their suvs it's great touching on cabin noise a little bit that is perfectly fine as well you guys could probably hear it now there's not a whole lot of exterior noises coming into the cabin of course then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. You're almost never going to have any issues with sedans anyway, so visibility is going to be on point. To go along with that, rain-sensing windshield wipers actually come standard on all trim levels. It's usually something that is an added option, honestly, for a lot of manufacturers out there, but I do love that it's standard on the Mazda 6. It's one of those things where once it starts raining or even drizzling, the windshield wipers come on automatically for you, so it's like automatic headlights. You never have to worry about it. It's one less thing you have to worry about, you can better focus on enjoying the drive in the 2020 Mazda 6, which it is definitely enjoyable, especially with the steering feel, to be quite honest, especially on these back roads. But to go along with that, a head-up display I am also looking at right now, assisting with visibility. That is going to be reserved for the Grand Touring Reserve. You see what I did there? And of course, the signature as well. So it's going to display the speed limit of any given road, as well as my current speed that I'm going. And of course, that's certainly assisting with my visibility here today. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this beautiful white 2020 Mazda 6. All right, you guys, and here she is, the 2020 Mazda 6, looking absolutely perfect in this white exterior. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. Black mesh front grille will come standard for all trim levels, but the signature, that signature trim is actually gonna give you a gunmetal finish for that front grille. But you are, of course, looking at the black front grille that comes standard for all trim levels but that signature but to the sides led headlights with auto leveling will come standard on all trim so you don't usually see that leds coming standard on all trim levels of mid-size sedan so that's definitely a plus led daytime running lights come with that as well as the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out the headlights will turn on automatically for you there did want to mention with the grand touring reserve that we have today as well as the signature trims you're going to get adaptive front lighting system too essentially what that does is when you're going around to bend it night those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle better help illuminating what is around the bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a rodent or squirrel whatever so that's always a plus as well then towards the bottom you guys kind of see where those chrome horizontal accents are towards the bottom lip there they will be black horizontal accents if you go with the sport touring or grand touring and if you go with the grand touring reserve or signature trims they will be chrome horizontal accents kind of tying together very nicely with the perimeter of that front grille as well as just under underneath the headlights there so definitely like that they're chrome down there but anyways let's go ahead and make our way to the side now of the Mazda 6 chrome window surrounds are going to come standard across the board for every single trim level also let's take a look at the side mirrors here real quick body colored power adjustable side mirrors with integrated turret signals again coming standard across the board and you will actually get power folding side mirrors if you were to go with the grand touring reserve trim level and up then take a look down at the wheel set up here they are going to differ slightly sport trim level is going to give you 17 by 7.5 inch aluminum alloys however all other trim levels are going to give you all the same size 19 by 7.5 inch aluminum alloy wheels and again that's with the touring trim level end up and now making our way to the back shark fin antenna found on the roof there you guys can see that rear spoiler a very small subtle rear spoiler looks very good on the back of this one led taillights also coming standard across the board i also kind of like the chrome accenting incorporating the two taillights there it kind of ties together with the front of the Mazda 6 too so big fan of that got a slightly new style Mazda 6 badging in the back that certainly looks good as well and there is actually one other change for the Mazda 6 this year I'll get to that in a little bit here but just below it all dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so I think you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip
it's open now since we are around back. There are a few different ways you can go about opening that rear trunk. There actually is a button on the key fob located on the side of the key fob. And by the way, this is a new key fob. Yet another change for the 2020 Mazda 6. It's also a button by the driver's side left me. And of course, you got the button in the back as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 14.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it. Make your way to the rear legroom. That is going to come in at 38.7 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Did want to also mention for those rear passengers, they will find a rear center armrest with cup holders across the board for all trim levels. It's definitely nice. Two USB charging ports for the touring trim level and up. You will find rear ventilation, once again, standard across the board. There are rear seat bat Mac pockets, although nobody uses them to put their maps anymore because you have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and digital navigation, essentially. Heated rear seats actually come standard on the Grand Touring Reserve trim level and up. That is a huge plus. Love when there are heated rear seats for the rear passengers. It's usually something found in luxury brands like Genesis, I know, usually does that. So that's crazy. Anyways, rear seats were definitely very comfy for me personally. But then make your way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seats will come with the sport trim level. Touring trim level and grand touring trim level are going to get six-way power adjustable driver's seat with leatherette surfaces and those seats will be heated up front as well. Grand Touring Reserve trim level that we have today is going to add an eight-way power adjustable driver seat with power lumbar, six-way power adjustable passenger seat, leather surfaces across the board, ventilated front seats, and memory settings for up to two different drivers as well. Then lastly, the signature trim level is going to add to that seating a Napa leather finish. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping, of course, manually adjustable, leather wrapped for all trim levels. It will get unique stitching if you were to go with the signature trim level of course that's not what you're looking at right now and you do get a heated steering wheel with the signature trim level we do actually have that with our grand touring trim level here today it's located just by the driver's right knee there but now when it comes to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the brand spanking new key for the 2020 Mazda 6 you guys remember the old style key that kind of narrow skinny looking plastic thing and that was a horrible description Andrew but nonetheless this is the new key it is a rectangular shape with the Mazda logo on the one side nothing on the other side and all of the buttons located on the side of the key fob including lock unlocking that button to pop the rear hatch so that is yet another change for the 2020 Mazda 6 again but to go ahead and start this one all I am going to actually do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located directly to the left of the infotainment screen. It's kind of an interesting placement, something I'm not usually used to. But nonetheless, once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is front and center, fuel information is going to be to your right. But it is pretty much a basic gauge setup. There's no digital gauge cluster here where you can adjust anything using the steering wheel mounted controls. It is just what you're looking at right now, essentially. But make your way to overall interior quality. This is where the Mazda 6 really shines, in my opinion. Power moonroof is going to come with the touring trim level and up. Dual zone climate control for all trim levels. Overhead sunglass holder for all trim levels. That's pretty basic stuff. But auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls for the grand touring trim level and up. And that, of course, does give you up to three different garage doors. LED map lights, that is going to be specific to the signature trim level, but that's the LED interior lighting essentially. What I really like though about this one is the contrasting colors, that's part of it. And typically just above the climate control settings here, just above the passenger side glove box, you usually will find either a rubberized finish or plastic finishes, but you have a stitched leather here directly above the passenger side glove box and it looks amazing. Also a brushed metal-ish looking style also above that passenger side glove box as well as on the doors there too so that also definitely looks very nice and again even just below the infotainment screen you have some more stitching found within the leather there a lot of very nice stitching going on it makes it look a lot more high end i guess you could say and i like the light headliner too there's a lot of black headliners going around like right now so I do like the lighter color just in front of the shifter you have a pretty deep cubby area up there course on electromechanical parking brake behind the shifter dual cup holders 
And just underneath the center armrest there, you have an SD card slot, two USB charging ports, auxiliary port, and a 12 volt power outlet. So overall the finishes and really the attention to detail in the Mazda 6 is quite nice. So I absolutely love the interior quality here, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on this one. Eight inch color touchscreen display will come standard. That is gonna give you Bluetooth and audio streaming as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay standard across the board, even for the sports trim levels. So that's definitely a plus. That of course gives you free navigation through your smartphone. All you need to do is just hook up your smartphone to the Mazda 6 and you got free navigation there as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs and there's a couple other compatible apps as well. Factory navigation system is going to come with the signature, although you really don't need it with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. And of course, you can check out your radio settings up there. By the way, when it comes to the sound system, we will get six speakers with the Sport and Touring trims. However, you will get an 11-speaker Bose sound system with the Grand Touring, Grand Touring Reserve, and Signature trims. So, guys know that is, of course, the one we have today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. I said to Definitely plenty of clarity there. Bass hit really hard at that one point, so I know the bass is going to be good, although that song didn't really showcase it all that much, but both sound systems are always on point. I've had them in my cars before. They've never failed me. They've never broken on me or anything like that, so definitely a crystal clear sound system there for the Mazda 6, but last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display at least is when you do put the 6 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels. Also, the signature trim level is going to add to that a 360 degree monitor if you wanted that. So either way, that of course is going to let you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by mentioning the Mazda 6 is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, meaning it is a super safe vehicle. So that's definitely a good start. Front side, side curtain airbags will come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard back there, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, of course. But where the Mazda 6 really, really does a good job is the advanced safety features coming standard across the board, even for the sports trim level including blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, advanced smart city brake support with pedestrian detection, forward collision warning, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, and high beam control, all of that coming standard across the board. That is absolutely excellent. But that about rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.